new day, and it's a whole new Sega Genesis uh, to work on today. This one uh, came to me, again, non-functional um, as part of a job lot uh, or, a, or a console lot that I bought uh, on eBay. Um, this is in, not in terrible shape from the outside of it so far, but the first thing we're going to do is verify that the person that sold it to us told us wasn't working. They didn't provide any other information other than they're not working. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, I can see we do get a little bit, try to crank the volume up on my little monitor over here. We do get a little bit of a red light, not a lot, a little bit of one, um, but we're not getting any video and I'm certainly not hearing any audio. Our reset button doesn't seem to be working either. So let's see make this thing operate properly. First thing we want to do, um, unplug it, put everything aside. I'm going to go ahead and unplug our uh, power pack as well, just so we don't accidentally damage anything. Um, we're going to pull him apart and take a look at our board and see if we can quickly identify uh, what is not working and why. Um, this video is going to be a little bit quicker uh, than some of our other ones. Um, so what I can tell you just looking right off the bat is this particular Genesis is probably a V4 board um, and you can tell that because I can see inside um, and my inner metal okay the the inner shielding the RF shielding only goes part of the way across so these last four holes are not shown this has also got a voided remove security sealed sticker on it that's interesting I've never seen one of those this must have and it looks like it's been peeled back before so somebody has been into this console before which not a big deal never seen that before though um, wonder maybe if this was owned by a, a, like a blockbuster or something like that um, on there um, I do end up running across that quite a bit, uh, where where I'll get I gotta I keep talking about it I keep talking about it um, about the, the 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 mythical Atari Jaguar I've got sitting over in the corner um, waiting for some more parts to come in, uh, but it was also it was owned by a, a chain called Premier Video. Uh, and, and you can see that where they have scored into a premiere video and stuff like that. Um, I wonder, and, but will you see the void, void if removed sticker? Maybe this was worked on by somebody else, or perhaps it was owned by a, a, a rental store. Um, for all you, for all you young kids watching this video, back, back before uh, we had. Netflix and everything else, if you wanted to watch a video uh, at home, uh, when I was a kid it was VHS and then, you know, DVDs and stuff like that, um, but you had to go down to your local Blockbuster because that's where you got your, your or your rental store, uh, video rental store in your area, and um, rent your videos from them because they're the only ones that had it. Okay. Taking a quick look at this. The metal seems to be in good shape again. That's good. I don't see much rust on it. It's, uh, it's always a positive. I don't see, I don't see much rust. We got a little bit of dirt inside. Nothing major. Uh, nothing. Nothing that's going to stop us from doing what we need to do here. Uh, I stand corrected. This is not a this is not a VA4. This is a VA3 board. 
Um, I'll try to pull this up. So we got PC, BD, MD2, VA3, USA board. Um, this is the third revision of this, uh, of, of the Genesis console. Um, we get the, the standard bodge wires straight from Sega. Somebody, nobody did this, and when I say nobody did it, uh, Sega did it uh, at their factory, but this hasn't, unless somebody has changed them later on, that is pretty standard for the VA3s. Just kind of glancing over at the board, giving her a good look over. Um, you know, I said that. This thing is suspiciously fluxy. Yep. Not only is it fluxy, um, but I can see in this area here where some of this, this, this board has been worked on a little bit. So I'll tell you what, um, let me grab a hold of the microscope real quick, slide him over. Um, took a few minutes this morning and kind of, uh, I say redesign, re relayed out my work area so things were easier to get to. So you guys can see the dried up flux um, all in this area here. Uh, but what makes me, what leads me to believe that someone has been in here is this stuff right in here. So with as much flux as on the board and how these are done at a factory, uh, you move up here and see how this one right here is just slightly discolored? Oh, you guys can't see any of that. Sorry about that. Let me flip this guy up here and kick the soft box off real quick. At least dial him down. There we go. Sorry. Let's get back up here where, you, where I can show you guys what I'm saying. We'll talk about that again. So you can see all this dried up flux. Uh, in this area. Uh, this is a paste flux. You see, that's what all that brown, gunky stuff looking uh, all over the place is. Um, that's what that's what all this right here is. This brown, gunky is, is a paste flux. Um, Sega did did um, put jumper wires in this power leg from here to here and they did the same thing from here to here but generally they clean these boards a little bit better than that um, when you get over up into this area you can see these little balls of solder like it just didn't get this this is what makes me think somebody ha uh, has already been into this board and already worked on it some because I've never I've never seen this before. Um, and then you look over at this leg, or this uh, this little ground strap right here, and this one is completely different colored. Now Sega was notorious, and I say Sega, everybody really is, uh, for some of these guys up here did not, like you, you'll have solder and then you won't have solder and stuff like that. That was pretty, that's pretty standard. Uh, but when I when I scroll around this board, it's just gunky looking. Um, a lot more gunky than I'm used to seeing. Um, just a lot. I mean, I'm not used to seeing one, a factory board, look anything like this. Um, Sega's quality control was probably not the best. Uh, I, the best I can figure, and this is just me guesstimating, is that they had a lot of different factories building these guys. Um, our EM filters here, our switches, just absolutely disgusting. Um, They had a lot of different factories build them, as the best I can figure, because the randomness that you get. Uh, sometimes, some, sometimes you all have Rubicons. I've seen Nichicon caps um, in these boards. I, I've seen absolutely components, uh, the variance of components between the boards, even from a, a VA, a V3 
VA1 to a VA3, um, which again, you see Sega, PCBD, MD2, VA3, USA. This is a NTSC, but the amount of variance in components, uh, and when I say components, I'm not talking about the raw chips. I mean, you do see quite a bit when you're RAM and things like that, um, but, you know, your video chip, for instance, this Motorola chip right here, uh, or or your RAM up here, your video RAM up here in this corner, uh, again, you, you don't see a whole lot of variance, a little bit, but not a whole lot. But, for instance, um, name. See, this particular capacitor, let's see if I can find it in, in shot for you. Um, it's the only black capacitor on the board. It's entirely reasonable to assume that perhaps the factory ran out of them and this is what this is what uh, Rubicon shipped. But I've like I said I've never I've never quite seen one look this dirty, this filthy um, golly, uh, I about couldn't get the little uh, do not remove to plug up the Sega CD off of it. You know, something, something's not quite right with this board. Something is, and you look up here in this area here, the flow on this, I mean, I would expect uh, if we're going to use this much flux, I mean, it's, it's, it's not sticky anymore. It's all dried out, but with as much flux residue as left on this board, I would legitimately expect to to for everything to just be flowed beautifully together. But that's not what I'm seeing at all. And I'm seeing um, try to get this this gunk right here. That is Sega's quality control was not necessarily great. It wasn't that bad. Um, whoever's been into this has not done us any favors whatsoever. Not the end of the world. Um, certainly nothing that we can't fix, handle, clean up, straighten up, all those all those things, which is what we're going to do, and we're going to do it in a hurry this time. Um, first thing we're going to do, the reset switch does not did not work. I tried it, could get no response from our reset switch at all. Um, I open the, uh, flip the board over, and when I see all of this, uh, and it's probably difficult for you guys to see. Um, matter of fact, I know you can't. My camera quality. I've, I hope, or at least I felt like with the last video, um, that I corrected a lot of the a lot of the uh, audio problems that I've been having, but um, let me kick the softbox back on, see if it'll bring up anything more for you guys. Uh, I hope I correct a lot of the audio problems. The, the video problems, I'm still kind of battling. Um, I've now bought three different cameras. I'm not happy with any of them particularly. Uh, we're going to roll with this for a little bit, um, and as we get as we get more viewers and more things, we're gonna we're gonna buy some better equipment. But um, bear with me on that for a little while. First thing that we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is clean this up. Um, so let me go round up a bunch of paper towels, and give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I've rounded up my paper towels um, and kick on my hot air gun real quick, like. Um, so I guess the first thing we're going to do is douse this in flux remover. Uh, probably, you know what, the first thing we're going to do is warm the board up. See if we can't, see if we can't, uh, see this, this brown right here, this, this flux should be almost melting, but it's, just not. Turn on my extractor here. Let's 
see what's going on with my extractor. Oh, she is running. There we go. Okay. So, we're just going to keep applying some heat. I'm not trying to reflow my, this board at all. I'm just trying to warm it up. Um, as we know, when we uh, apply a little bit of heat to the board, it makes old flux uh, liquefy again, come up again. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for us to clean off. We're going to douse the whole board down, the whole back of it down. This is not IPA uh, isopropyl. This is flux remover MG chemicals. We're going to let that sit for a second, soak in. Um, wash it around. I mean, there is just so much flux on this board left over. This was paste flux, too. This. Um, Whatever, whoever did this, I, I, this is the, and when I say the paste flux, this is not like in a syringe. This is not like no clean uh, or anything else. This is like o Ote, uh, the uh, plumbing, plumbing flux uh, that you get is what this stuff is. I mean, this stuff is horrendous uh, and it's a real pain to get good and cleaned off. Just isn't much that you can do with it. It doesn't like to. It doesn't like to clean. Uh, whoever did this, it looks like they were working out of a jar of some sort. Um, and I've I've seen that I've I've. When I was first learning how, you know, you don't want to spend the money, you don't want to buy all the, the expensive stuff. Um, and so what, what, what I've seen is people get the little tubs because they're super cheap, and it's a little plastic tub of flux. Um, and you can, never, you can never seem to get it to do what you want it to do. Um, I'll tell you what. Let me, um, so I don't completely screw this up, let me take a quick picture. Uh, using your smartphone to take pictures of some of this stuff is a great idea, uh, especially when you're fixing to remove a bunch of stuff and you're not quite sure where it goes. We're going to fix, we're going to remove all this. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but this, I'll tell you what, let me fire this. Let me fire this back up, this uh, microscope. We'll do this under a microscope. You guys can see what, what I'm seeing. It is terrible, to say the absolute least. Sorry, I'm trying to find something to prop underneath this edge. Um, something that will be the perfect height. Keep us off. Uh, keep us off the off the ground a little bit. Okay. I tell you what. Okay. Here we go. So I went to pull this particular wire right here off, um, and when I did. You can see all this brown flux underneath it that just wanted to, for lack of better terms, just stay put. Um, not, not even, I mean, it's literally still, let's see if I can see, let's see if you guys can see that, like it's literally still attached to the wire. I won't let the wire go, but it is, now that it's warmed up, ugh. It's still tacky as all get out. Oh no, I made a bridge. I must correct that. There we go. Um,
guys can see all this nasty brown. I don't even know if I'd call it flux anymore. I don't know what that is. Um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep playing in and get this thing nice and spick and span for us, so that we're not we're not dealing with this stuff. You can, I don't know if you can tell what's already happened to my um, my paper towel, but it is pretty gunky. So we're gonna apply some more flux cleaner to us. This right here is why I keep paper towels, and I'm such an advocate of using them. Interesting. Whatever that is, it, it won't, it doesn't want to uh, remelt into flux. It just wants to stay sticky, tacky, uh, and almost glued. It's almost like a glue, but it's, I mean, this is definitely flux. I just... Never seen flux act quite like that before. That's very, very interesting. what manner of funk this is, but if I had to guess, um, probably some of this stuff has gotten, whatever this is, has melted up and gotten inside of our reset switch, maybe. Uh, that can definitely cause it not to function properly. Out, throw the IPA at it as well. Um, I mean, it's coming clean. It's coming clean slowly. Um, Being a little bit more coarse with this, a little bit uh, faster, and I guess I guess you'd say more abrasive with this than I normally am.
little bit more than I'd normally be. Um, not for any particular reason, other than I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this video at the pace that I normally work at. Um, the some of my videos I like to get in depth. Uh, and getting in depth with repairs and things like that takes time. This is definitely absolutely a repair. Look at that. You can see I don't know, you can see the yellow. That's old flux pouring off of this board. Pouring off of it. Um, that's after multiple scrubs and it is still absolutely pouring off of this board, the old flux. Now, the question, the question now becomes, well, will that old flux harm the board? Generally, no. Um, generally, flux will not interact with solder mask, or at least uh, so far that we know, and I say we, um, that we can tell, other than being sticky and nasty, generally uh, flux will not negatively impact solder mask on a board, uh, will not hurt it in any way whatsoever. Um, but, but, here's what happens with old solder mask, or with uh, old flux becoming sticky on a board. Here's, here's what happens. Um, and again, we're still pouring flux off of this. Here's what ends up happening is the flux gets sticky and when the flux gets sticky it, at it attracts things. Things get stuck to the board that should not be stuck to the board. Um, and I'm not talking about the occasional hair. Uh, we're talking about dust and debris. Um, we're not even talking about creepy crawlies that, that like to get in these consoles in the holes. We're not talking about that at all. We're talking about things, whatever. Um, and when those things, you know, dust and debris and, uh, you know, carpet fibers or, you know, uh, the kids, um, the kids, uh, high sun or, or juice or whatever they're drinking, um, dirty fingers, dirt, sticky boards attract things. Those things get on the board and won't come off, okay? And when they don't come off, those things themselves can damage the board. Very interesting. All right, we're going to take this here, hold him over. Uh, it's those things that get on the board that end up damaging the board um, over time. So I want to look at under my magnifying glass. I want to put that under a microscope for you guys um, because I can see some stuff in, in some of these uh, trace bins. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. That right there will work. Is that just gunk? Is that what that is? is it discolored spots? Is that just gunk? You catch it in the right light, and it doesn't look like gunk. You catch it in the right light, and I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like that uh, those are all broken traces. Sorry, uh, give me one second. I'm looking for... Um, something sharper and more pointy than what I've got handy. See that? 
Uh, I'm not quite, but it's everywhere, and it looks like it's coming out of this via. I'll bet you that, that is just junk. Um, let's hit that, especially these areas. A little bit of heat. I say a little bit, with a whole lot of heat. that with a whole lot of heat and we're going to try to I uh, I honestly I, I honestly don't know what all that is uh, in there the traces Naked eye look broken, but they're they're not. They're not broken at all. They just look that way. Very interesting. Tell you what, you open these things up, play with enough of these, and you never do know what you're going to find. Okay, so let's start off with our crappy bodge wire job. Now that we got most of this flux out of the way, first thing I'm going to do, kick that guy on right there. I'm going to attempt to reflow this uh, power socket, but we may end up pulling it. Um, and then we're going to um, look at that junk. Just it just pours out of it. Nasty. going to desolder this. So what's happening is on this center leg, and it was a little bit on the other ones, but specifically on this center leg, um, it doesn't seem to want to attach the to the to the leg itself. Um, I don't seem to want to uh, the solder doesn't seem to want to attach to it. I'm not quite sure why. What we're going to do is heat that up. Maybe that's why. Um, maybe, maybe that's why Sega did what they did with our with the the bodge wires they put on them. The reason I'm using my uh, solder pump here versus my desoldering gun is my desoldering gun is sitting at 350 degrees, uh, which is not warm enough. Warm enough, and um, it's not ready yet. Otherwise, I'd be using it. Let's see what. Whatever asshole, excuse my language, whatever jerk soldered this sucked. And I mean sucked. He was terrible. And you will see that quite a bit, by the way. Um, that whoever... A lot of times, just you know, people fancy themselves quite the uh, quite the repair, quite the electronics repair man, and um, what you'll get is, you know, I always call him John, John the idiot down the road. Uh, you know, he's uh, 
he can fix anything, so he says, and, uh, you know, he's got a, you know, he finds an old Game Boy or something, or an old, you know, Sega or flea market, and um, decides he can fix it, so he goes down to uh, his local True Value, buys him a $10 welder, so Weller soldering iron, and he begins to go to town trying to repair this. Um, listen, I'm not knocking anybody. There we go. Now we're up to temp. We're up to temp, but it doesn't matter on this anyway because it looks like I'm free. I go, oh, sure am. Popped right out. Okay, so let's do this. First off, this looks not horrible, um, but not great either. Let me take just a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, so he goes down. He goes down to his local True Value store, and he picks him up a soldering iron. Ten dollars, some little, you know, the little cheap weller. You know the one you see, you know, at at the Lowe's and the Home Depot and all the rest of them. Uh, and so he picks up his little well, weller soldering iron, and he goes to town, and he can't get it to work. So he goes on Google. This is how these consoles end up on eBay, by the way, if you if you didn't know, or on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or wherever. Is, you know, he, he gets his Weller soldering iron, and he goes on, I can fix this, I can fix this. And he goes on, uh, man, I'll fix this and make a fortune. First off, no, you won't. <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and stop you right there. You're not going to make a lot of money. You're not, probably not going to make any money. Um, I can't tell you how many of these I have sold nearly at a loss. Um, you know, Segas don't bring a lot of value. NESs are going up again, uh, which is great. Um, I think it's the pandemic that's caused that. But anyway, you know, John the idiot was down at the local, down at the local um, uh, local flea market, or he was browsing around Craigslist, and he found some of these old consoles. He found one. And uh, he gets it home and says it's says not working, and he's convinced he can fix I can fix it. I can fix anything, is what John the Idiot always says. And I call him John the Idiot. He may be Dave the Idiot. I don't know. Uh, hell, I might be that idiot sometimes. Um, I can fix that. I can fix that. And so he goes down. He doesn't have the tools to fix it. Gets online, realizes he might have to replace a capacitor. He doesn't know what a capacitor is. Uh, so he so he looks that up, and he goes online to um, wherever, and says, you know, you have to replace this, you have to replace that. So he goes and he gets, you know, buys him a couple capacitors, whatever he's going to need for the job, and um, goes to Lowe's, picks him up a, a soldering iron, you know, ten dollar, fifteen dollar Weller soldering iron thing thing. Uh, it apply it, it heats solder uh, ish. And he begins to attack the board. He goes after it. Uh, with gusto. It's always with gusto. And he attacks the board with gusto and he does a terrible job. Uh, and he and he barely he, he barely either barely gets it working, it never does work, or he manages to somehow some luck out and get the thing working somehow, one way or the other. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, and then he turns around to sell the thing uh, as a fully working, fully functional unit because, of course, he does, right? Yeah. That's, how, that's how the idiot works. Um, and uh, posts it on there and gets it Gets it, uh, gets it sold, working, non-working, whatever, mind you. Um, 
that's that's where these busted up consoles come from. And then, you know, you get them at home. So, oh, honey, you know, we're oh man, look at this. I found this great Genesis, you know, and the guy says, the guy always says that it's working, or he sold it to me. I get a great price, and it can't be can't be anything hard to work on. Uh, it just can't be, you know. It, the guy says, you know, it turns on, but you know, nothing's on screen. I get, a, I can Google this online, and Google says, you know, Reddit says a guy on Reddit, a guy on uh, GBA forums or whatever says it's just this. This is all I have to do, and I'm good to go. Uh, you know, and so you buy the thing, you get it. It doesn't work. Um, you're unhappy with it, and so, you know, you're not sure what to do. So it started off with John the idiot. Uh, who, let's all be clear, you know, I call him John. He's a Voltar, calls him Dushin Dan. Um, it, you know, it starts off with that guy being an idiot. And, you know, Mr. I can fix anything, and I'm going to make a fortune off of this. And, you know, the whole nine, you know the deal. Um, and uh starts off with that. You finally get the board. You put your hard-earned money into it. You were unaware that John the Idiot existed, uh, and we're probably better off not knowing he existed, to be perfectly bluntly honest with you, because John the Idiot is what ruined this board to begin with. Uh, again, I've seen huge variations in Sega's and the boards that Sega sends out, huge variations. What I've never seen ever is a board this bad. I've never seen one this bad. With this much gunk and this much nasty on it, you just, I've never seen one. Um, I i guess it is entirely possible that Sega sent this out, but I just somehow doubt it. I just somehow doubt it. I somehow doubt that Sega sent this, this particular unit out the door this dirty. Um, while Sega's quality control, I will be perfectly bluntly honest, not the best, uh, especially during this, this model uh, of Genesis, not the best at all. Um, uh -oh. You know what we forgot? The perfect amount of thermal compound. While their quality control is certainly not the best, better than this. This is obscene. But that's no big deal for us. We'll get this guy up and running in no time. No problem. Whenever I don't want to, I can get these uh, 7,800 chips to drop right in. Whenever I need them to drop right in, I can't get them to. That's, uh, so goes the story. But anyway, uh, so you know, you get your console, your shiny new console, and you know, look at how excited you are uh, home, and the stupid thing doesn't work, and you're aggravated, and you spent your money, and you don't know what to do, and John the idiot has moved on. He is he has now moved on. He fancies himself quite the quite the console repair man at this point. Um, now here's what John the Idiot does. John the Idiot then gets on Reddit or Atari Age or GBA forums or you know wherever uh, and he spreads his misinformation because that's what John the Idiot does um, about this console and how to fix it. Well, let me tell you something, John the Idiot. Okay. You're an idiot. Uh, nobody likes you. And
and and I don't appreciate misleading people. Uh, first off, in their their repair decisions, because you clearly don't know what you're doing. Um, second off, I don't appreciate you abusing this hardware this way. And I'll and I'll explain why I don't appreciate it so that you understand it. Okay. Some kid, right? My little brother. I talked about in the last video. Some kid, right? Saved his money to buy one of these. Some kid mowed yards, saved every penny. Some kid read you know, went down to, to the grocery store and picked up a, a magazine, you know, and he was, he was, you know, seven or eight years old or whatever, and, you know, he read in the magazine about, you know, the console wars going on, and he wanted this Genesis, you know, he, he, he saved his money up, uh, you know, because his parents wouldn't buy him one, and he saved his money up, and he went down, and he, he paid his hard-earned money for this, and this console this one, this console, was somebody's first time seeing Sonic the Hedgehog. It was somebody's first time playing Ninja Gaiden. It was somebody's first time playing Double Dragon. And this, this console, this one, was a memory and a cherished memory and turned somebody on to video games. And this console deserves better than what you are doing to it. You know, this thing isn't a classic Ferrari. I, I'll give you that. You know, we're not dealing with a classic Ferrari here. We're not dealing with a million dollar supercar. We're not dealing with, you know, a vintage Rolex. We're dealing with a game console. But, but, someone loved this console loved it. Somebody got to see Sonic the Hedgehog. Somebody in the summer of the 80s, you know, and 90s bought this console, you know, or 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 maybe in the, you know in this console's case rented this console. And this was their first time seeing the the magic, you know. And this console has brought happiness and joy to someone's life. And that that should that should that should mean something, you know. If this thing, maybe that guy never gets it working. Maybe maybe the person who saw Sonic the Hedgehog on this console for the first time, maybe they never see this console again. Maybe they don't even know this console's still around. But they still remember playing that. This console made memories for people. Uh, and that's something that should be taken seriously. That's something that um, should be cherished and looked after. Because this console did something special and meant something special to somebody. You know, I can remember being a kid. My mom was a school teacher, and uh, in the summertime, me and my little brother, um, we would go. My aunt worked um, right up the road. Of course, this was a completely different time. You could, you'd never do this now. Um, but my aunt worked up the road at uh, the, the video rental store, and uh, you know we grew up in small town USA, you know small town Tennessee, and um, my aunt worked at the video rental store, and during the summertime, when my mom would go in to set up her classroom for the summer, me and my little brother, you know, we would go, we would go with her, and we didn't have to go, you know, it was a different time in the in the in the country, a different time in the world, we didn't have to go. Mom certainly would have let us stay at home, I think, but um, or maybe she wouldn't have because she knew we had tore the house apart. But um, at any rate, we would go, 
and we would we would bring our Nintendo uh, or bring our Sega, bring my brother Sega. Uh, most often it was Nintendo because Sega wasn't that popular in our area, and so because of that, the video store didn't rent Nintendo games or didn't rent Sega games. They uh, so you know we could only play what we what we had or what he had. I didn't have one, and he certainly wasn't going to let me play his. Um, but we would walk. We would walk, okay? Uh, out the back of the school, which is elementary school, and we would walk down the road um, to, or all the way out the back, um, the back playground area, and we would walk to the video store up the road. I'm going to prop my phone up so I can see where exactly where these wires went to. So it looks like it looks like that if I turn my board this way, this wire jumped around this loop, this screw hole, and went to here. I bet we can go straight through and make that a lot quicker. And then this wire went from hey. here to there, so I bet we can do that too. Um, I would be willing to bet that let's get our meter. We're gonna be we're gonna be super cool about this. We're gonna do a good solid job. We're going to uh, get in continuity mode here, and because we happen to know that this console is a center pin positive, then we know this is positive. And since we happen to know, none of these other legs. Are um, since we know center pin is positive on this, and we check the other legs, and they're both uh, they're both negatives. We know the center one is our positive leg. So what we're going to do is that means on our drawing or on our on our little sketch that this little wire right here that goes straight across. Uh, we can make him red, so we're gonna. Um, at any rate, um, sorry, uh, back to my little story. So we would walk down the road. Uh, we'd leave the back of the schoolhouse, and we'd go down the road, um, literally down the highway, and uh, we would pass um, into the parking lot of a little... Uh, I don't even know what you call it. It wasn't even a shopping mall. It was so small. Um, but we would go into that little shopping mall where the where the rental store was, and also and also uh, Big Al's comic books. Um, for those for those that grew up in the area, uh, if you ever see this video, uh, you'll know exactly exactly what I mean about Big Al's. Uh, Big Al's comic book store. Um, so anyway, we would do that, and we would go in there, and we would rent a we would rent a game, you know, and then we'd go back to the school, and Mom w would have uh, by that point found the video cart that the school had, you know, for for displaying uh, movies or whatever in the classrooms, and um, she would have rolled it down to her classroom for us while we were gone. Because she didn't have, you know, as a school teacher, an elementary school teacher, mom clearly didn't have anything else going on but to satisfy, you know, us two, us two rotten ass children, uh, rotten children. And uh, so, so at any rate, she would wheel that that thing down while we were gone, um, renting a game, and we would come back and we would plug up the Nintendo to it. get it all tuned in and we would start we would start playing whatever game we had rented just whatever that happened to be at the time um, I do remember there's one game that I've been looking for for years one of these days I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna put the effort in and find it uh, but the game that that we rented was uh, it was cool spot that was back when uh, Companies used to, uh, and I say companies, 
various different companies used to make video games, you know, whether it was a uh, cool spot was uh seven up, I think, or whatever. Um anyway, so we would rent those games back onto my story. Um we would rent those games for, you know, pennies, yeah, I say pennies, for a you know, a dollar or so. We'd save our money up all week, you know, whatever. Or, you know, if we didn't have any money, mom would uh, graciously give us a couple bucks, mainly just to get her out of her get get us out of her hair. Uh and and we would go and rent, you know, the game. And we'd get it back and we'd plug it up and we'd play it for, you know, fifteen, twenty minutes, whatever. You know, the the attention span, you know, of a ten year old. Um Ten-year-old in the '80s and '90s, anyway, and uh, we would plug that up and we'd play it, and then we would decide. Usually, within a matter of um, 30 minutes, you know, I don't like this game. And it's not that we didn't like the game; it's just there were other games. You know, we had saw all these games on the shelf that they had. And, you know, it's not that we didn't like this game. It's just, I don't like this game. Let's go get another one. And so, you know, back out the back door we go. We didn't even tell Mom we were leaving, you know. Um, it's a different time, different world. And uh, so back down the back down the uh, hallway we'd go, and we'd leave out the back door of the schoolhouse in the summertime. There's nobody there but, you know, me and my brother and my mom. And, uh, you know, we'd walk back down the... Uh, back down the uh, playground all the way back and we crossed the main highway uh, walked down the street you know two little blonde haired boys and um, back to the video store we go and my aunt would always greet us she knew it was coming you know she knew it was coming every summer she knew it was coming uh, and Aunt Linda would greet us Hey boys, you know you guys didn't like that game. No, nah, this game sucks. We we don't want this game. We want to play a different game. And um, so you know she would, being being family and you know being our aunt, you know okay you guys go pick out uh, pick out a different game that you guys want to play. And uh, so we get that game picked out. Decide, you know okay let's go back let's go back and play this one after we bicker and argue. You know. Um, We'd bicker and argue over which game we were going to get to begin with, you know. Uh, do a little bit of do a little bit of negotiating. Well, we'll get this one, and you know, an hour or two, we'll come back. We'll get this game, you know. Uh, anyway, we'd get the game, and back down the highway we'd go. Uh, you know, I say back down, you know, quarter mile down the main highway, and you know, all seven cars we'd pass, uh, or would pass us, you know. He was like, oh, well, you could have been abducted. Maybe, I guess. You know, we never thought. We certainly never thought about that. Um, you know, uh, I'm not saying mom didn't. I'm sure mom thought about it. But you know, the town that we grew up in, it would have been. It would have been. It would have been a real bad day to abduct a kid. Uh, for for, you know, anybody in that area that I grew up in as a kid would tell you. That that would have been a mistake to abduct a kid out of the, out of the area I grew up in as a kid, which was uh, which was a little town in Tennessee. Um, that looks much better, um, much better. Okay, you know, so so, and I can't tell you, you know, how many games that we got to play and got to enjoy got to spend time with because uh, because we had the console and we, we could do that um, but you know they also rented game they also rented consoles there and you know it was so funny you know you almost couldn't you almost could never even get in to, to rent a console because they were always they were always already rented somebody had already rented the thing you know so, you know, if you wanted a console on this day, you couldn't even get it. Hey, buddy, what you doing? Sorry, my, my puppy has shown up to come and, and 
investigate the area. What you doing, buddy? Man, you being a bad dog? Being a bad dog? Um, no, it's not. No, it's not licking me in the face time. No, no, no. Go away. Okay, okay. Get down. Get down. Go, go, go. Bite the children. Go bite the children. Go bite them. It's okay. You can bite the kids. I can't play with you right now. You see, I'm on the video. I'm recording. On the video. You see, I can't. I can't. I can't play with you right now. You see. I can't play with you right now.
guys. Welcome back. Um, so, me and this console here, uh, this particular Genesis, have done absolute warfare. Uh, we have we have been to battle uh, for the past several hours. Uh, me just tracing out every single thing I could think of, um, literally racking my head against the wall. Uh, meter and everything. I went and changed every one of the 47 UF 10 volt capacitors to 47 UF 25 volts. I changed all the 100 uh, 16 volts I had in there to 150s, uh, 100 volt, or 100 UF 50 volt. Uh, just because it, what the problem that I was having is every time I would turn it on, uh, and I'm going to pan the camera down and show you uh, the problem that I was having is. The game would turn. The console would turn on, and then any time sound would kick on, the screen would distort, and then the console would start, or the the video on it would start shaking, vibrating all over the place. I was getting uh, lines vibrating everywhere, um, and so I'm gonna plug this game in, and uh, bear with me. I'm gonna pivot this camera down here and turn him on and let you guys see. Uh, what exactly was going on? Uh, so bear with my uh, excuse my wire sticking in, your, in, in the way over here. So here's what was happening. I would turn him on. And this is what it was doing. And no matter what I did to it, it would start. It would do this constantly. Um, and the buzzing sound wouldn't go away, no matter what, what game I tried. Um, it, it continued to do this. This problem persisted and persisted and persisted. Um, so, in my mind, what it looked like at first glance to me, uh, let me get my camera back up here where you guys can see me, uh, what it looked like to me was that either we were not getting enough power uh, first and foremost, I thought, well, we, we, we're obviously not getting enough power through, so perhaps, um, perhaps I've got a bad transformer, a uh, bad, bad wall ward, bad, uh, bad uh, jack at the wall. Uh, and so I changed that to a brand new one, pulled a brand new one out of the box, problem persisted. So I thought, well, maybe the solder joints are cold. Even though I had already taken that off, cleaned it up, and put it back in, maybe I, maybe I didn't do a good job soldering it. So... Uh, back to soldering I went, cleaned those joints up. And then I thought, well, maybe these little jumper wires on the bottom right here were, were not correct. So I, uh, I redid those, relayed those out. Uh, and then I thought, well, maybe the capacitors are not, not they, maybe the voltage is higher on the board than what's really there. Maybe they're not storing, even though I had replaced them. The only one that I didn't replace was uh, this 22 uh, 22 microfarad 50 volt one because I didn't have one handy um, and after I had sorted through all the capacitors and still couldn't get it I thought well it's got to be that so I went and dug through a bunch of drawers until I found uh, another 22 volt UF I, I think I had like three of them left um, that didn't resolve the problem so I desoldered the clock that didn't resolve the problem so I desoldered the recess switch that didn't resolve the problem so I reflowed the main processor I reflowed the work RAM. I reflowed every single chip on this board, top to bottom. Couldn't get it. So then I started going, and you'll notice this board is absolutely filthy right now. Um, I started going literally with my multimeter, trace by trace by trace, and couldn't get it. So I thought, well, perhaps I've gotten a bad 78SO5, this guy right here that we changed out earlier, uh, that we always change out from the factory 7805. Um, so I switched the original one back in. Uh, problem persisted, got no better. So I went and checked, and no matter what I did, it didn't matter. I checked the cartridge. The cartridge was a little dirty, but it wasn't terrible, um, and that made no ch no difference. So I tried a different cartridge, and that made no difference. So um, I reflowed all the solder joints again. I literally have been working at this board for hours, and I have played with this thing um, trying to get a resolution. And I, I've taken, I've literally taken the video connector off three times and put it back on, checking it, doing continuity tests on it, and here is what I finally found 
and my desperation um, because I was literally ready to throw in the towel uh, and record uh, the first video on this channel of a, well, guys, there's a console that just can't be fixed. Um, as bad as I really didn't want to do that, I was preparing uh, in my head to go ahead and, and, and make that video. What I found, though, is I wanted to, I figured, well, maybe there's some oxidation in the power plug. So I was twisting around, playing with it, and every once in a while, it would clear up on screen. Now, mind you, any time that I went anywhere near and touched this particular jack, it would, it would, it would almost like it was like it would reset the console, um, no matter what I tried. Um, if, I, if I even looked at it wrong, if I rested a finger on it, it would act funny. Um, if I twisted it, rotated it, pulled on it, pushed on it, whatever I did, it would act funny. Until finally, I found out that if I lift it up really, really, really hard, and the harder I lift it up, the better off it got. Excuse this wire hanging in the way. So let me get this guy reinserted. Off and back on. So I lift it up just right. I hold it in just right with just the right amount of force. I get an absolutely flawless screen, an absolutely flawless sound, and everything works as it's supposed to. So, what exactly is going on here? Well, let me tell you. Um, so I noticed this earlier when I was cleaning the pins off uh, on the console, when I was cleaning the pins inside. And what I've done, uh, and I recommend you have one of these handy. Uh, if, you, if you don't, a small file will not be small enough. You need one of these. It's a little, it's a little, um, it's a cleaner for hot air rework, or I'm sorry, a, a desoldering station. So the idea is that you take this guy and you stick him in here and you clean it, you know, scrub him back and forth and clean any of that trash that's in there out, right? Um, what I have done, because the end of it is not, you can't, you won't be able to see this on camera, but the end of this is very finely uh, serrated. And I say serrated, just it's, it's bumpy a little bit. Um, and so what I found was, and what I always do is, if I clip if I clip the end of this off, I can take him in here, and I can clean these guys out, right? And what I noticed earlier, and I was not paying shame on me, I was not paying enough attention, um, is that some of these were really tight, and I almost had to wiggle them to get them in the right place. Looking in it, I couldn't see any any faults inside. I couldn't see any. Um, but it felt just a little bit funny. And when you look at it, when I would insert or, or, or try to take out, the whole end of it would flex. Oh, well, that's a little weird. Uh, but nothing that I was super worried about. And when I say that, um, it caused me to go ahead and desolder this whole thing. Like I said, I, I three times and resolder every single pin around it, check continuity between here and these pins, check continuity. And with this out, check continuity from here to the termination point. The V is on the boards, or the capacitors on the boards where they go through. Um, and every time, it would absolutely it would tone out correctly on the meter. But as soon as I would plug in the cable, it was bad. And by accident, lifting up on the end of it, um, I just happened to find putting an enormous amount of pressure up and in that that resolved the problem. So, what, where do we go from here? I am not going to clean this board. I'm not going to do any more with it. I'm going to go and order a uh, Sage Genesis Model 2 AV out. Um, they're cheap. They're a couple of bucks. Um, and to be perfectly bluntly honest, um, in all of the Sega Genesis Genesis that I've repaired, um, and we're talking, you know, I, I won't go crazy and say I've repaired thousands. Um, in, in the hundred plus uh, of, of Genesis that I've worked on, 
I've only ever run across two of these, and this would be the second one that was legitimately bad, uh, and I could not make work properly. So, um, because it very rarely, cartridge slots fail more frequently than these video outs do in my experience. It, that is my experience. That may not be yours or anyone else's, but mine, the cartridge slots, which never fail on a Genesis, fail more frequently than the, than the AV outs on them do. Nevertheless, so, so it, because they fail so infrequently, it's just not something other than a basic cursory check that you do because they never fail. Um, it would be it would be it would be akin to you know the first thing you check would would be you know the the main processor the 6800 on here they don't fail they don't break they don't wear out um, there's nothing the chance of something going wrong with them is so slim it's just not even something you check um, so but I mean these do fail you can get them they're not expensive that's why I didn't check it first. Uh, I guess my word of caution in the end of this video to you guys is, um, you know, if something doesn't feel right when you're doing it, and, you know, I've, I've said this to myself a million times, that doesn't feel right, don't do it. It didn't feel right, I should have stopped there and, and triple, quadruple checked that and just went over that with a fine-tooth comb, and I didn't, and that's what caused me hours of extra work. So we're not going to end this as a failure um, because I, I – Sooner or later, I will run across a console that can't be fixed. Um, and I say that as I've got a, a Super Nintendo sitting below me on the workbench uh, in, the, in the stack that cannot be fixed. But we're not going to end this on a failure. We're going to end this on a, we're going to revisit this um, probably in you know, a week or so. Let me, let me get on and order the part. Um, it's Saturday going into Sunday, Mother's Day. So uh, let me get on and order the part for it going to take a few days. It'll be mid next week, maybe end of next week before I get these parts in. In the meantime, we'll put this guy aside um, with the, along with all of his screws and everything, loosely put back together and put him aside. And when this comes in, uh, we'll redo the video. I'll show you how to change one of these guys out and uh, crossing our fingers, crossing our fingers, that fully resolves it. I believe it will because just because of what I've gone through. I could pull one off another board and double check it, um, but since I don't have any of these uh, on hand, it probably wouldn't hurt me to have a few extras anyway uh, sitting in a drawer, and it's not worth my time to pull one off because, and I'll tell you why, if I pull one off another board and put it on here and this works, I still have to order one, right? Um, I still have to order a couple. If I And then take this one off and put it back on the other board because I'm going to want a new one here. And I've already, I can put pressure on it, and I can make it work by putting pressure on this connector so I know the problem is inside of here. Uh, as I'm pushing in on it, I'm holding the front of the board, you know, lifting and pushing in, so it's not like I'm holding the cartridge, I'm not bending on the board, I'm, I'm holding all of my pressure straight in and up. Um, and so because of that, I know this is our problem without a question. All I've got to do is get the right part in, and we'll revisit this later on. So. Um, as a quick little video, I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you learned something, um, even if it was just a quick montage of me changing capacitors and all that stuff. Here's what I will say. When we, um, when I do get this back in and we revisit it, uh, let's, you guys go ahead and pick out the LED color you guys want to change to. I'm a big fan. Of, I've been thinking Sonic Blue, uh, Blue LED for this console. Um, but I tell you what, I'm going to let you guys decide. Put down in the comments what, what color you'd like to see. Um, and then once this piece comes in, we'll change that LED out. We'll put the uh, 78SO5 back in it and uh, clean her all up, make her shiny and beautiful, get her, and then decide what we're going to do, whether we're going to sell it or display it or something like that. But at any rate, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to hit that uh, like button, the little thumbs up down there in the left-hand side. And I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and click that bell icon so you can get more um, more notifications, more videos like these. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.